we have, um, we're going to hear from City National Bank on a, a slightly different point of view. The effort a financial institution goes through when implementing RTP. Attila uh, Stuptek, Vice President of Faster Payments from City National. All right. Oh. That's okay. All right. I don't have to do a whole lot. Everybody did my job before me. The three <laughs> last three sessions kind of prepped the almost last uh, 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 session. So I've been with the bank for about three years. I'm one of those, uh, can I call it RTP Gypsy, Cheryl? <laughs> I'm on my second bank implementing RTP. So I've had experience uh, going live with RTP, with being the seventh largest bank in the beginning, and now I'm about four months ago, four months away from turning on uh, at another financial institution. And that, that experience that I'm trying, I'm gonna try to share and uh, kind of had some preview, previous conversations about it with, uh, uh, with a, lot of, uh, a lot of you out there. Uh, I'm not gonna go through these slides. These are RTP and other payment rail, 52 years, the first time in 52 years, the first three. So ACH, I don't know how many of you know that the ACH network was launched by uh, the top three Californian banks back in those back in those days had nothing to do with the rest of the country, so it was a West Coast uh, effort. Uh, uh, speed feature, right? So all all of those attributes we are all very familiar with: uh, credit transfer, remittance data, the uh, acknowledgement that receipt of the confirmation, the RFP, RFI, and the request for return of funds. I am too close, or I'm too loud. Uh, <laughs> I was actually lucky to be part of the room back in the days when this was put together first. Uh, 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 so I'm, I'm borrowing uh, 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 some of these slides from the clearinghouse, right? So there is no restriction for where RTP can go, right? Uh, and then uh, if I'll take it one step further, this is what's happening right now. Uh, whether that's, uh, uh, and we know that there is a lot of conversation about the banks that are catering to the gig economy uh, activity uh, that's driving the volume now, low value activity, which is actually probably goes, uh, it, it goes well, it will go well with, uh, with the time when it's going to change and the high value transactions are going to start entering as we progress into next year, potentially another raise and, and, and so on and so on, because we can learn from all that uh, low value activity that we've had in the last five years as banks and, and the industry, including the fintechs. What can we do better for transactions now that are going to start hitting uh, 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 accounts with a significantly larger dollar amount, a bigger risk, different risk, uh, different attention on a, at, at a bank level. So it, it, it's great that all of this is in, in a phased approach, if you will. And it's continuing down that path. Uh, the volumes over a thousand routing numbers are live, uh, uh, and nothing but up. Uh, 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 th this is where I'm, I'm going to start to talk a little bit. Also, how is this going to impact the customer that we are building this for? Uh, from a receipt perspective, uh, uh, where are they going to start seeing this transaction hit their accounts? Uh, they're not, you're not going to have the ability to to have a lot of chargebacks. So out of the gate, everybody's been talking about it all day long that. Uh, RTP has this built-in mechanism of fraud control. Uh, you don't have the ability to debit an account. You can only push. You don't have the ability to uh, 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 initiate the transaction unless you know, I mean, in, in every instance, you should know who you are sending the funds to. You're validating that on the, on the retail side. It's going to be a requirement that you validate that first transaction that goes out of your organization uh, uh, to another organization on the consumer side uh, you validate who the receiving part is. A, a, a potentially good product innovation would be to validate that on the business side, but that's a, a different conversation. Uh, all right, so the type of the type of payments uh, that a business could receive at a at a merchant level, uh, vendor payments, or even imagine that Best Buy they don't have to load up their hundred inch TVs in their warehouse at the uh, at the end of the year for Christmas. Uh, they know how many. Uh, they, they're gonna they're gonna pay just in time those uh, those those funds in for delivering that product. Uh, the uh, the send credits right, so uh, it's gonna be there 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 is a there is there is a lot that still has to happen with send uh, at a bank level as well as at a fintech level. Banks are not software companies. 
we don't build software necessarily. We partner and in a lot of instances uh, augment the existing, uh, what, what we buy with ours and then we, we try to tweak it so it, it, it's user friendly. So there is a lot that needs to happen on the send side. That's, I think, one of the reasons, uh, uh, not the major reason, but one of the reasons why we have not seen significantly higher optical volume uh, 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 than, than we have today. Uh, payroll, it's impacted. Everybody knows about it. It's nothing new. Same DACH is losing a lot of volume to that. Uh, cash concentrations. A lot of banks are looking at this differently. So how my large corporate can concentrate with multiple banking relationships, how fast they can do that today. RTP is going to change that in the future when we get to the dollar amount that's going to allow for that. And then the vendor payments. Uh, and then the request for payment, right? So that, that, that's been talked about three times at least today. Uh, not just on the bill pay on a consumer side, but it will be transitioned on the business side. It will have an impact there too uh, 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 on the long term. Uh, challenges. Uh, every bank is on a war path of modernizing their payment platform. It doesn't matter what your size uh, of bank you are. You are already doing something or you're about to start something, whether that's upgrading your core platform or upgrading your middleware that's in between your core and the customer facing interface. There's a lot that we had to go through uh, internally to just to give you an anecdote. I have two three way NDAs uh, currently to address RTP connectivity for send only. So it's a very complicated. The, the, the smaller you are as a financial institution, the more complex this is, is getting just because you don't have the subject matter experts in house. Uh, you have to outsource the development process of it, and then there is a cycle when the contractors are finishing their project, then they are on their way to do something else at another organization, potentially, if you cannot keep them. So the, the, the transition of that SME, that subject matter expertise, leaving smaller financial this is what we deal with. Uh, uh, I'm sure that larger financial institutions are uh, not necessarily exposed to the same exact, infor, uh, same exact uh, uh, experience, but... This is what we have to think about it. When I launch, I'm going to have to think about it. How am I going to be able to maintain the knowledge that was built up in the, uh, during the project with my contractors leaving and, and keep the knowledge as much as I can internally so I can transition that into developing RFP, into cross-border, into tokenization and everything else that comes with it. Uh, core platforms, right? So uh, for the longest period of time, banks have had, uh, I did COBOL. Back in the days, uh, I don't know how many are have been exposed to it. A lot of core platforms are still running on that, right? So it's it's a it's it's a massive undertaking to take on a new core platform. Everybody is doing it in a different way at a different pace. It has an impact how and what kind of core you have when you turn a real time payment like Rail on uh, on a core platform. Uh, we are before our TP, we were not typically a twenty four seven bank. No one was. Even with the credit card environment, that was a side, a side business, if you will, that someone else did the, the work for you. So you have to address all those instances where uh, uh, you're getting the, the funds. Are you going to memo post them, post them, or like, uh, post, uh, uh, post the transaction after the core uh, completes its cycle, or you post them in live? So there's a lot, of, a lot of nuances that we have to figure out. How are we going to do this so it doesn't have an impact on the bank? And then on the top of that, uh, we are trying to add all these ancillary services that are necessary for launching a new payment rail like fraud control, compliance, OFAC. And none of this has to be done yet in real time. But internally, our risk management uh, or, or risk organization is looking at this. Uh, you are going live with a real time payment. Uh, why should you not be forced to do uh, fraud control in real time. And then we'll bring the value proposition that RTP comes to them. But it's still, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna let money go out the door faster, and you don't want to put a fraud control in front of that uh, uh, as, as you're moving the money out. So there, the, the, it has to, the build up, the, the knowledge that we have to bring into an organization, it has to come uh, from the top down. Uh, uh, everybody has to buy in. They have to understand how uh, this is going to change their uh, uh, legacy environment and how is it going to impact them on the long term. Uh, uh, everybody, uh, uh, there's a generational uh, uh, problem here too, to some extent. 
uh, we've been accustomed to deal with legacy payments like checks, uh, uh, wires and ACH for a very long time. And everybody keeps saying that uh, 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 it's worked for so long. Why do we need to change now? Or there are a number of reasons. Uh, uh, we do have the check printing and reconciliation embedded into the DNA of this uh, country. Unfortunately, it's going to be hard to rip that apart. But uh, there is a lot of attention around this. How is this impacting operations? Banks no longer have to have lockbox operations in-house. They can outsource it if the volume is, grow, is, is dropping as it is, and something like this fast comes and replaces that. So from an operational perspective, the cost of running the business is going to be potentially lower. It will be, uh, uh, it will be going down, but at the beginning, because we are introducing a new rail, it will, you'll have a high cost introducing it, and then you'll taper off and you start seeing the services I mean, the, the savings that you can get from the new service that you're implementing. Um, mm. uh, we have to think about uh, channel agnostic. Uh, 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 so the, the, the channel agnostic concept alone, uh, if you're not a heavy hitter on the mobile side to provide your treasury portal, uh, fully functioning treasury uh, services on a mobile platform, you have to get very used to that and you have to learn uh, uh, whether you do that in, internally or you partner with someone externally and bring that knowledge in to, 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 to further push the, the development of that uh, 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 concept of moving funds, not just on a mobile platform, but on a, uh, on a desktop uh, on a desktop based application. And on the top of all of that, everything gets moving a lot faster too, right? So it's easy to introduce a, an online bill pay platform on a mobile in, uh, uh, environment uh, uh, while it's running on a legacy payment rail, but now you're introducing the complexity with the fast, uh, 50, under 50 seconds, the money needs to be out the door. So th there's just different, uh, uh, different co uh, complications that you have with it. And one of the biggest, um, headache that we've had, uh, it's uh, how are we going to manage internally complaints, uh, uh, customer calls. So whether or not the account uh, was closed before the fund hit the account or is the, uh, the account open uh, to accept uh, uh, the transactions? How do I explain that up the chain from the customer service organization to central apps that, hey, this is how RTP behaves. Uh, you have to, there, there's a learning curve. Everybody learns differently. And because we've been ingrained in the legacy environment so much, we try to compare how we did uh, customer service in a wire room to RTP apps. You're not going to be able to manually touch these transactions, uh, whether they come in or they go out. You have to build that expectation that uh, everything has to be automated uh, 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 as much as possible. And, uh, and then collecting the customer information if there is a complaint about, hey, I was told that I'm supposed to be receiving $100,000 by RTP, uh, I didn't see that hit my account. What happened? Then we have to try, uh, trace that back, work with our operations team, with the clearinghouses operations team, and try to get to the bottom of why did the funds did not hit the account on our side? Did, did, uh, did was the account uh, uh, the owner of the account? Did they opt out of receiving real time payments? Or did they, uh, uh, did they have an account that was dormant for a long time and uh, we sent back the incorrect, uh, we rejected the payment and sent back the, uh, the appropriate reason code with it that, hey, the account has been dormant, nobody has done anything on it. Uh, you, you might need to revisit the conversation of sending a real-time payment to your partner to another account. So there are a, a lot of these components. Uh, uh, there's not a booklet for it. So you have to learn as you go to business line by business line what are we doing today? What do we have to do tomorrow when RTP becomes a reality? So uh, it, 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 you can appropriately train everyone and get everyone up to the same level of understanding, uh, right? So this, I mean, I, I'm not even going to talk through this. Uh, uh, even the previous uh, presentation had a lot of uh, 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 feedback on, on, on banks moving to payment hubs. Uh, because we want to introduce these ancillary services at an enterprise level and not on a product by product level like we've done. We've built the banking ecosystem in the U.S. For ACH, I have one fraud control. For wires, I have a different one. For RTP, now I'm going to have a third one. So we are trying to consolidate this back and bring everything back holistically at a at a at a at a payment hub a payment hub level uh, so at an enterprise level I can plug in any type of payment rail that I want to and the same components are going to work for it across the board for every uh, type of transaction the, the the biggest problem we had with this one too was 
uh, that we have one core, a different vendor for the middleware, and yet a third vendor for the customer facing. So uh, that that two way, three three two diff, uh, three, uh, two three way NVAs that we have in place, it allows us to get this transaction out the door under the normal DCH SLAs, and it's a it's a very it, it, it's it's hard to build this out. One entity wants MQ connectivity, the other one wants API. I, and then the third one wants API, but they want to sit, respond back to us via MQ because it's just so complex. And banks, as we are trying to modernize these environments, we are now looking at it holistically and changing a lot. We're going to turn RTP on, and then we're going to probably revamp all of our back office applications uh, uh, to make it more streamlined and go to an API uh, call instead of... Uh, relying on MQ calls uh, uh, as we are doing today. Uh, uh, a lot of great stuff. I, I like I like this, trying to figure out where uh, things are going to fit and how they're going to fit. Uh, 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 the only other thing that I said that uh, banks are dealing with these problems, and now we have to turn around and think about what the customer is going to face. Right. So uh, I brought that question up that there is about 400 plus different ERP systems for every industry. Uh, a lot of these ERP systems are telling my customer who's calling me that unless you move uh, to a cloud-based ERP system, I can't work with you to make you RTP ready. There are different ways to address that, but uh, if, if there's a cost that it's not affecting them as well. So we have to build, in, build that relationship, do really a, 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 a more of a consultative engagement with them to truly understand what is it slowing them down the transition to RTP and can we replace it with something else before they are forced to move uh, to a cloud-based accounting platform or ERP platform. So th th that's the external, the internal components that are creating problems for a bank to launch a real-time payment like uh, uh, a system. Uh, uh, and then you have the external components that you have to understand how the clients, the ones that you serve, what are they doing today? What can you do with their existing environment to help them transition to that? And then listen to them that everybody is complaining that uh, we are ready, but we are not really ready uh, uh, to some extent uh, uh, with RTP. So that, a, a lot of great stuff that happened the last uh, year with me here being at this organization. Uh, almost there. Uh, any questions? I'm, I'm really, I mean, everybody else did their job before me, so I don't have to do a whole lot. Yes. So from your perspective, the point that you have mentioned, which is some of the challenges, is obviously from the corporate lady, the builder side. Yeah. So can you explain some of the things that in your experience that you are doing to kind of increase that, you know, the outreach or from an education standpoint, since that seems to be a challenge or resistor? Yeah. So at my first organization, we did, in conjunction with the cleaning house, we did a series of webinars. We, we invited the top five customers on e from each industry, invited them to a webinar, uh, and then went through the whole process of explaining what RTP is, how is, that, how is RTP impacting, uh, impacting us as a bank, how is uh, RTP going to impact their business. Uh, Pre-recorded that, and then we did a massive marketing campaign. So that, that, but that was at a bank that was top 20. Uh, I'm, I'm a, uh, the, lower, the, 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 the smaller the bank is, the less likely that you're going to have the funding and the resources available to you to mirror something like that. There is a need. Uh, TCH is doing a lot uh, uh, in this space. But, uh, right, so we are looking, what, what, what we've seen so far is that at high level, now banks have to turn around and try to bring this down layman's term and explain it, how is this going to really impact things. Their daily uh, uh, payables activities is going to be, uh, instead of XYZ, is going to be one ABC. So how is that going to make it easier uh, uh, and train them? Right now, that is a gap. Uh, we are looking at the same concept of uh, uh, doing a marketing campaign with webinars. Pre-recorded webinars so that's available for anyone to, and, and, and trying to really generalize, not necessarily you look at one use case particularly or one industry but try to generalize for everyone the impact the positive impacts that RDP has on everyone. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you.